Hello and welcome to the WebTree's genealogist presentation of Exploring Places. You can find my website at thelucidcenter.com and the blog at thelucidcenter.com slash genealogist. Now today we're going to look at um, the web page here. This is the theme of the rural theme. There's different themes here. Um, I'm using the rural theme. I got my custom header there. Um, this is my home page with my favorite ancestors there and slideshow but today we're going to be looking at places one of the things I want to show you is the place hierarchy I found under lists this is a very useful tool um, some features of it starts with the top level which is usually the world and I have my uh, maps of countries that my ancestors have had events at so you could add that as a custom feature show you an ancestor using um, the Google Street View option. So again, in the United States you could add maps of the st or flags of the states and we'll check out an ancestor of mine in Indiana. There's markers for all the counties in Indiana and he happened to be in Madison. So when we get to Madison, my marker happens to be placed where a Google Street View um, position is. So a Google car with one of those cameras on top drove down the street and took a picture. And so it's not like a, a view of um, the past, but it kind of gives you an idea of where they might have lived. But this is just a city view, so this marker isn't exactly where they live, but down here we see that we have their specific address. Uh, I think it was from a US city directory. So now we have their specific address. We have this map here that's interactive as well so we can see the street they lived on. But more importantly is we have their street view and this is the house that they lived in. So we could, um, or at least the property they lived on, it could possibly be a new house. But if you find an old house then you know it was the house that your ancestor lived on or lived in. Um, if you entered in this information and it was wrong, you could edit it with the place check and the geographic data, but you could always um, go down the street if you do know where the house was and uh, just click save right here and it'll save it to your database. So pretty cool feature. Of course it lists the person who was living there um, and you could click on their information to get more of that to find out exactly um, how they were linked there. And this guy, William Robert Luce, he had a 1937 residence there found in a city directory. So we could pull that up. He was living with his wife, Margaret, at the 1615 Luce. So, very cool. Next, I want to show you um, how we could use the place hierarchy to do our research. So let's say that uh, we're in the family search website and I go down to, they update these databases all the time, right? So New York was recently updated, or recently added to the 1905 census, uh, the state census, or 1892. So anyway, you find a database, um, no matter what it is, and then you find your data and streamline it to where your data will only show individuals that match that database. So we're going to look for people who have any event in New York. And I want to point out here that this is a yellow marker because I haven't determined the geographic location using the geographic data or place check. Um, so my database is incomplete in that respect, but you could go through and make all your markers correct the first time and you won't have to go back like I did. So from here I could narrow in on the county or I could just click on New York at the bottom and it's going to list every individual in my database that has anything to do with New York. So I'm going to display all and then I could organize by birth or death and that will help me determine who is in New York. So in 1905 we could guess that someone born um, anytime in here that did not die by 1905 
and this person was in Michigan, but they had an event in New York. Looks like they were born in New York, so it's going to list anyone with the, any event in New York. So if we go down, here's a bunch of folks who do not have death dates, yet they were born in New York around 1876 and 1880, so it's likely that we'll find them in that database. And so this is just a way that you can look for every individual that might match that database and then pretty much check off that database for a few months until they update it again. And last but not least, I wanted to show you the pedigree map found under charts. So when you click on pedigree map, uh, it's going to be defaulted to me as the person, um, but it kind of shows four generations of my ancestors and it's color coded. So yellow would be great grandparents, um, green is grandparents, blue is parents, and then red is myself. So in this map's interactive, you click on these dots and figure out who the person is. Um, you could zoom in, kind of go through these, figure out who these people are and interact with that in that kind of way. And just to give you a example of other person other than the default person, we'll look up my grandfather. He's got ancestor from France, which again would be an ancestor from France for me, and I could have increased the generations, but the more generations you add, the longer it takes to generate, and you need to have all of your um, map coordinates in place. So um, it shows here that I'm missing three, and the more that you're missing, the longer it's going to take to generate, because it wants all that information. So it's best to get all your map coordinates in place and don't be like me and be lazy and not do it. So again, this is interactive. You could choose and kind of see that some great grandparents came from overseas, New York and Michigan, grandparents in Ohio and the Detroit area, and then everybody else kind of stuck by that Detroit area. So that is that, and this is interactive over here. So you could pick someone and it'll show you where they are in the map very cool feature of the program. So play around with that. There's all kinds of different things you could do. If there's more than one or more than five people in a given spot, it'll cluster them together um, just to help generate it quicker. And it's a very useful visual tool for tracing migration patterns. So thanks again for watching and this was the WebTrees genealogist presentation of Exploring Places. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learn more about WebTrees and get that program installed if you have not got it installed already.